SBS warns that the following program contains material that may be offensive to some viewers. SBS advises that the following program has been classified M. It contains sexual references, nudity, and adult themes. Hello, Paulie here in the south of France, mate. You see that chapel? You know what's in there? A shocking secret. A secret that, like, once I expose it, it's going to change the way the world thinks about soccer and the World Cup. There's a secret society involved. George Bush is involved. Leonardo da Vinci was involved, mate. So what am I talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the Da Vinci Cup. In 1890, the priest of this chapel, his name was Francois Sornaru. He was going through the chapel looking for a place to hide his sneaky porno collection. He's pulled up a special, like, a, a panel in the floor he's never seen before, never noticed, because normally he was pissed from the wine. Well, he found these parchments, mate. Sacre bleu! Parchment, by the way, is just, like, I had to look it up. A parchment's like, uh, this is the paper but in them old days. Next thing you know, Sornaru starts doing strange things in the church. And then he holds big parties, inviting all sorts of hoity-toity people. The parties get out of hand and they start doing strange orgy <laughs> rituals. Now, the Bishop of France, mate, he got upset. Priests can't be having, like, orgies and that. I mean, you know, not officially is he wanted to kick him out of the church. Mon ami Pope. Sornaru, when he finds this out, he sends a letter to the Pope. Next thing you know, Sornaru's off the hook. The Pope says, no, leave him alone. He's a good priest. There's no problem for him. <laughs> the orgies continued and a secret society was set up. And this whole thing is tied into the world game. Yes, soccer, yes, football, mate. And I'm gonna tell you how far it goes back, because I am, if you can see that, mate, the conspiracy buster, and we're gonna bust this conspiracy of the Da Vinci Cup. It all starts here in Southern France, in Sornaru's hometown, Rennes le Chateau. And you wouldn't think that such a small bee's dick of a town could have hatched such a massive conspiracy. Now, it's not easy to bust a conspiracy, mate. So, look, I've brought my, like, mirror aviators. You can see my backpack. In there, mate, is a myriad of, like, gadgets and that I got from the $2 shop, mate. Do you know something about the mystery? Pompadour, what was that? Bonjour, mademoiselle. Non, pas mademoiselle. Oh, ma chick, the priest with the woo, you know. Ah, no, no, no conozco. Quand il est mort, moi, j'étais pas né encore. Je n'ai pas connu son hier. Photo. Bonjour. Merci beaucoup. He said something about there's probably going to be people following you. I think he said something like that. I think this bloke's following me, mate. What do you know? We know you know something. We know you know. Just, just hit us, tell us. I tracked down Sonaru's great nephew. When he was a kid, he modelled for Mad Magazine's covers. Today, he's a village idiot. He's playing dumb, but he knows more than he wants to say. He's running away. This bloke, you know something. See him smile at us. See that look, that inbred look. What do you think the priest discovered? Oh, I don't know. I think he discovered something very big, but I don't know what it was. What was the secret that he discovered, mate? Well, we're going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. You ready? Are you ready? The legend of Socceros. It started in the Jesus times. The Roman soldiers would kick skulls from heads around. This is where the expression giving head started. Now, a prophet of the name of Socceros was watching them. And he saw a historical significance in this game. 
focused on the ball, the holy circle he called it, he would get visions of the future, it would like trigger something in him. You left. The Romans called him Pillus Amamus. In Latin, that means someone who loves balls. Socrates at this stage didn't have a girlfriend. Socrates started a game named after himself, soccer. Goal! And eventually, he got himself a girlfriend. But his prophecy abilities didn't extend to chicks, because he's picked up Pontius Pilate's wife. Probably the stupidest thing he could have done in them days. Grass cutting Jesus' big speech, Socrates yelled out all future World Cup results. The village idiot, Josephus of Arimathea, wrote them down. He had no clue about what he was writing. He was just trying to impress chicks. Was that England or England? <laughs> that night he's gone back to his cave. And his dreams were haunted by visions of what he had read. In the morning, fully freaked out, he committed stoogicide. About a thousand years later, when the Crusaders were doing their peace in the Middle East, a group of Special Forces Knights were resting in Josephus's cave. Their leader, Sir Killalots from France, he found the ancient scroll. And as if by divine intervining, he could read ancient scrolls. Just like Josephus, he had freaky dreams too. But he wasn't a village idiot. He could sense the power of the predictions. He sent the scroll back to France with his unofficial girlfriend. In those days, knights were meant to be virgins, but they were the studs of their day, and they had heaps of sexy medieval chicks. So the story goes, Sornaru has found the parchments that have the same list that Socorus has predicted, mate. All the results on the parchment, apparently copied off one of the original Holy Grail buckets. The legend of the Holy Grail buckets. The legend I read on the internet says, the sexy medieval chicks engraved the results onto three Holy Grail buckets. They needed spares in case one was stolen or one was mistaken for a piss bucket. In them days, they didn't have toilets. When the Crusaders returned, they were the same but different. They started strange ball-worshipping ceremonies. And they insisted that the sexy medieval chicks give them orgies whenever they wanted. And they started bludging. All they wanted to do was play this ball game. A game which would eventually lead to the modern soccer football game. In the tradition of the church, anything fun had to be banned. So the party pooper pope stepped in. Only he could have chicks and fun. The expression, breaking one's balls, came from this pope. The knights and sexy medieval chicks disappeared, taking the holy grail buckets with them and the grails have not been seen since. But here's an interesting fact. The castle that the grails were made is only five minutes from Sornaroo's church, huh? Think about it. I know it's complicated, but concentrate, Stugio. Socorus makes the predictions. Josephus writes them down. The scroll goes back to France with the chicks. They put it on three buckets. The buckets disappear. Sornaroo finds the list. Okay. But who wrote the list that he's got? The Man. predictions, the World Cup, the whole thing? What's the name of the author Suck at the bottom of the parchment? Good. The signature was the number one egghead himself, Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> mate, look at this. It's like a ghost town here. Look, look up there. Look up there. Nothing, mate. There's nobody here, mate. I think they've got wind of us. Someone's warned them that we were coming. Tipped off by the village idiot, all the town people had gone into hiding. 
there was only tourists hanging around. Massing over here is a big bunch of tourists, mate. They've all come to check out the mystery. You can see them, they're all coming in. There's special tours here in France where you can come and reenact the orgies that apparently happened in this town. They came on the special Le Orgy bus. The chick is explaining what they're actually going to have to do. You'll have to get nude, uh, leave your clothes in the lockers. Have a good orgy. Have a good one. This is the entrance to the church. Look at the secret markings, mate, you know. I mean, if you didn't think there was a conspiracy, come on. There's a skull on a crossbones. I mean, what? They put X marks to spot on the treasure too? And up there, you can see it, mate. Something going on. A chicken on a ball. And look at this freaky devil at the front of the church. If it was meant to scare me, it didn't work. I jumped the fence and had a look around the back. I looked in here. It smelled like goat. I don't know what this thing is here. Was it for water or I'm not sure? And then I noticed the Magdala Tower. I remembered Saunaru built this, allegedly with the cash he got gambling on the World Cup. I looked around the bottom level, nothing. I went up the stairs. Out on the top, there's a good view, but it's cold and you do get shrinkage, so I went immediately back down. As I've come down, I noticed the circle symbology. Look at this, circle or ball symbols everywhere. It was time for a gadget. I've seen them films where you get the special pen and then like a secret message comes up. I could smell I was getting close and my feet. Ha, look at this. I knew it, mate. Nitrous oxide. Now, what is it? Nostradamus. Nostradamus, that's a clue. The next thing I needed to do was leave the town. But look who was following me as I was going. Baldy. I'll duck him down through here. I'll just zigzag up this way. Cross the road, up the hill. <laughs> Lost him. To follow up on the clue we found, we've got to go to Nostraville. That's the hometown of Nostradamus. But before we do that, let's take a quick tour of the castle where the sexy medieval chicks used to be. The legend goes they walked all around in here nude. All year round, mate. In winter, fully erect nipples. And in summer, just, you know, sweating, getting good tans and that, the European style. And I'm just visualising all them nude chicks right here, right now. It's basically like the original Playboy Mansion when you think about it. Spewing I was in here when, like, it was all happening. This is the room where the orgies happened. Like, the knights would come in, meet up with all the nude chicks. It supposedly happened like on Halloween. I don't know what that's significant, but it was. This was, in fact, like a bed. In them days, the chicks were smaller because they didn't have good foods like we got now. Now, this room is exciting, mate. Because, like, if you come down here, you'll see the space where Leonardo da Vinci has got involved with the whole thing, mate. Apparently what's happened is some weird priest, freaky bloke, I don't know, wizard, he's hooked up with Da Vinci right here, mate. Now this wizard is the one who shows Da Vinci the grail bucket. And it's here that Da Vinci copies all the scores, and it was the results he got off the bucket that ended up on the parchment in Saunaroo's hands. It's okay. This is basically the home of the World Cup right here, man. Have you got it yet, Stooge? <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci's the guy who designs the World <laughs> Cup, mate. He was the guy who actually came up with the plan to organise the games, get it worldwide, globalise it, and get the betting happening, mate. He was an Italian, he was a scammer, mate. Of course he wanted to make cash. Another fact about da Vinci you probably don't know, there's rumours that he was a gay lord, but, I mean, he actually came to this castle in search of them medieval sexy chicks. But the problem for him was, mate, he took that long. By the time he got here, they went from medieval sexy chicks to Renaissance fat chicks. And that's why the Mona Lisa looks like what she does. One of them, you know, crabby old bags that he's probably had to give it to after coming all the way from Italy. Now, at the village under the castle, here's a scoop. It's not the kind of town where they expect someone like me, a big celebrity, to come into. They might be a bit shocked at first. We found the illegitimate great-great-grandson of Leonardo da Vinci. His gene pool comes from the fat chick side of the family. He's not smart. In fact, he sleeps with a goat. And he has zero artistic talent. 
I asked if he would help us bust a conspiracy, but the poor blokes run off into this goat field and hid. <coughs> Goodbye, Henry, and hello, Nostraville. We're going to jump on this train and get to the hometown of Nostradamus. And I thought about everything, mate. Soccerus, the Knights, the Chicks, the Vinci's involved. Suck you know, Saunaroo's got orgies going on. I kept thinking about that bit for some reason. I better do some research. Chapter 1. Ah, research is boring, man. Where's the magazine? Ah, <laughs> Chalk. That's a top title. This town was actually named after Nostradamus, but just like his nose, the name was a bit long and they shortened it to Nostraville. Now, I've asked this the locals way. for some directions on something to do with the bloke. No, this way. Due to the language barrier, I ended up in this cake shop that only sold cakes of Nostradamus and chocolates. Just uh, the, uh, the chocolates, said the little bloke. I've bought a little Nostradamus and chocolates. It can't hurt. I was just about to leave, and this old bag has written something down on a piece of paper. Cool. Ches Maurice. Uh, Before I could work out what that meant, look who's come back on me like a bad croissant. Baldy. For the second time, I ditched Baldy, and I found the Nostradamus Museum. Look at this, mate. This is hokey dummies. Weird paintings, weird symbols. There's a picture of the young Nostradamus, ugly from day one. I'm sitting in Nostradamus's like favourite chair, and over here is the first love of his life. She's not an oil painting, although I'd prefer it if she was in one. Like his girlfriend, the museum was a shocker. And to make matters worse, look who's popped up in the foyer. At first, I was scared of him. He's still following me, mate. But his following style was Z-grade, mate. Look, there's Baldy on the left. Oh, the old duck in the shop trick. Where did he go? I can't see him no more. Come on, mate. If you're going to follow me, do a better job. He was a stooge. I told the cameraman to stop wasting film on the bloke. Hello? Is Mr Nostradamus home? Pourquoi? Uh, Monsieur Nostradamus. <laughs> Desperate for information, I started looking for relatives of Nostradamus. Hello? Is this Nostradamus, like the house? No, no, Nostradamus, hello? Yeah, don't worry. I started knocking on doors. No luck, people were just blowing me off. I'm the conspiracy bus to help me. It was starting to get dark. I was hungry and the investigation was going nowhere. But that's when I spotted this restaurant. Ches Maurice. That's the name on the paper the old bag from the chocolate shop gave me. I've looked inside for a clue. I looked at the people. I looked at the food. And then I noticed the owner. Look at that head. Who does it remind you of? Look at that nose. I've taken a punt and asked him if he was related to Nostradamus. <laughs> Meet Pepe Nostradamus, the great-great-grandson of the original. This is his restaurant. That's his favourite food. He eats it seven times a day. Now, he does look like a nut, but he's one of the richest men in southern France. Why? Because he's fully connected to the conspiracy, and he's open about it. He just won't give you any details. He finds it annoying the amount of people knocking on his door trying to get to the truth and that. His, his lips are sealed. But I found his weak spot. I bargained him a pallet of Tim Tams for a little bit of information. He always bets on Brazil because he knows that when they're going to win and when they're going to lose, and he knows the way to bet with them. I asked him about the sexy medieval chicks. He just giggled. I asked him if he knew about the Holy Grail bucket. He just laughed at my face. Uh, but then out of the blue, he tells me if I want any more information, I've got to marry his daughter. Ma fille. Ma fille, elle. Maintenant, ça change. Il y a beaucoup moins d'ouvriers. No offense, Peppy, but she's not my type. I sprinted off and booked into a hotel. And I settled down for the evening with a good reading of Chalk magazine. I hope that's not Peppy's daughter. Oh, that's a relief. Hey, what's that? Hey! Hey! Who are you? 
I didn't know what to make of all this, but I went back to check out what the guy left. An antique gun and two circle buttons. What, are they trying to tell me something? Is this a warning? I was confused, so I went back and read Chalk Magazine and had a sleep. This was like a warning from the Circle Society, the secret group, mate, who's behind the whole thing, trying to, like, you know, scare me off the trail. Oh, what? Mate, well, I can tell you, Stooges, you can leave a sword, you can leave an Uzi, you can leave a tank, even five fat chicks. Nothing's going to get me off the trail of this, mate. Bring it on, mate. Bring it on. I was all fired up, but I didn't know what to do. So I've gone into this church. This is where the original Nostradamus is buried. He wanted to have his coffin in the wall standing up vertical. This has got no significance to the documentary. It just proves he was a wanker who always had to be different. Speaking of wankers, look who's just showed up. I would have slapped his bald head into the holy water, but the priest was doing a mass, so out of respect I let him off. And just then he's pointed to a set of chairs next to me. I thought I would get the gadget out just to check. And look at this, mate. Louvre. That's the famous art gallery in Paris. At this point, I made several conclusions. A. Baldy was actually one of the good guys. And I suspect is related to this World Cup referee. B. Something of importance is in Louvre. And C. Pepe Nostradamus' daughter is a shocker. Goodbye, bumpkin lands. Hello, big city Paris, France. It was time to bust the conspiracy, so I marched straight into Louvre. But in the public areas, I told the cameraman to use a camera phone as not to be suspicious. Stop filming that chick's ass, man. In the statue section, ball symbology was everywhere. And there was a little statue that looked like Tula, Habib's fat girlfriend. I checked out the Da Vinci section. I was trying to unlock the code. All those pointing fingers, it must mean something. But these paintings are complicated. Like, look at this, mate. What? A heifer with man arms choking a duck. Stick that one up the arts, Da Vinci. I was about to give up hope. And then I noticed this. A miniature replica of the castle of sexy medieval chicks. This is what it looked like before an army of village idiots inexplicably smashed it to the ground. That's another conspiracy. I knew there was going to have to be a secret entrance around here somewhere. Let's have a look. Ah, there it is. That was easy to find. I've gone in. I was expecting security, but there was none. Move on, Paulie. Quick go. I've gone down the stairs that smelled like pee-pee. I could tell this section was old. It smelled like my nana's garage. The clock is ticking. Use the gadgets, find some clues, man. Not sure what I was looking for, I just looked at everything. As I've come into this chamber, I've seen the penalty for going against the Circle Society. You can see all the bones from them who've gone against the conspiracy, mate. Look at them. Look at all these bones, mate. There was a strange, funky, almost sweaty-like smell in the air. You couldn't half tell what was going on in there, man. There's rumours of orgies, you know, like they go sick. As I stepped on a condom, I worked it out. The secret society is carrying on the tradition of orgies started by the sexy medieval chicks and them horny knights. Millions of stooge tourists don't realise what's going on right underneath the Louvre. And we've snuck in, sucked in when you see this on TV, sucked in. Behind the orgy room, I thought I'd found something important. It's from The Simpsons, that name. That was a stooge, but there was heaps of markers, writings on the wall, all of it pointed to this room. Look at it. You can tell it's a tomb, probably of one of the ancient sexy medieval chicks, or one of them horny knights. Got to use the blue light clue finder. Hurry up, the documentary's gonna be over. One minute, what's that? Berlin, Berlin? Huh, of course, where the World Cup's gonna be played. 
You should have seen that coming, Paulie. They're probably trying to kill me. It's dangerous in this town, Berlin, mate. Why they're doing it? Money and power. 